in 1911, we started delivering to the people here in town what we call bacteria-free water. Back in the early days, we had 120 sites around town where people tested water for us. We got to be doing it so good, the government let us cut it down to 60 for a few years. We even improved, we never had any problems. Then they cut it down to 30, then they cut it and kept it at 30, and then you have these things come along because back in the old days, they didn't have a lead copper rule in the federal government. So um, they have now, we test for water by federal law every three years at those sites. I've never had an issue. So uh, we pride ourselves in deliver, delivering water. If you come to our place, you'll see plaques on the walls and health departments and so on, recognizing what we do. We test the water. I was there today, people coming from all over the place, cities, uh, public service districts, I mean, Elkins, wherever, and they come here and we test their water. We have a state-of-the-art lab. But we don't test for lead there. We send that off to get me tested. We used two years ago. And so anyway, uh, that's kind of like what we do. We deliver safe water to 96% of this county. The only place we don't do is Lumberport, and we do a little part of Shenston out towards Saltwell Road, and a little bit in Taylor County. But all the towns around here get our water. And uh, this is the issue. Uh, back in the middle of May, I'm gonna call it specific dates, but that's close enough. Uh, we were notified by the uh, health department that there were three children that had an elevated level of blood, uh, a lead, lead in their blood. And that's discovered by a, a, a doctor or most likely a pediatrician. And they're required when they find that, they have to notify the state health department right away, okay? And then the state health department contacts the Fairmont office and they conduct a test. They go to those homes and they check for lead. They check for lead in paint, for possible water, lead in soil. Some people work near lead. One of the people's kids that had this told me he works at a, a contractor who he could have brought lead in, in his clothing because he works around lead. It could be brought from any sources. And if you read any of the press releases closely, they all very clearly say it does not mean that the Clarksburg water work caused these children to be sick because it could have been anything. But when we find out about it, we reacted. So we found out in the middle of May. When we look at their records, the state health department, the first child was diagnosed in September last year. We didn't hear anything about it. And then the second child was in January. Again, we didn't hear anything about it. In some place, another part of town, there was a child in April. Well, then they did some testing at those places and found an elevated lead level. And what that is, it can't be any more than 15 parts per billion. And I'll give you an example of what that means. Visualize this. If you had one billion BBs, you know what the little BBs are, little tiny? If you had one billion of those, you can imagine, that's a lot. There can be no more than 15 of those little BBs that have lead in it. You see, you get the picture? So, once it gets above 15, uh, oh, we take action. Clarksburg, back in the early part of the century, I'm talking in 1917, 20, 30, 40, up to about the mid-50s, as well as cities all across West Virginia used lead service lines. And I want to explain what that means. Out here on this street, there's a main line that runs down here, through here that delivers water to both sides of the street. That's the main line. Then off of that line, there's a line that goes over to the customer's water meter. This has got follow me. That's our responsibility, and that's where lead service lines are in some of these older homes and that's where a potential problem could be. And then on the other side of the meter is the customer's responsibility. It goes from there into their house. Now here's the issue. Um, so they found these three places with elevated lead. When they told us, and I think I'm trying to cover the thing in a logical order, in the middle of May, the first thing our manager does and our people, they go out and test those homes as well. Then what happened, the state health department said, no, 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 you guys back off and hold off, we'll do that. So we did. And then on May 25th, about four or something in the afternoon, a Friday, we get a notification from the State Department of Health, uh, in June, I'm sorry, in June, the 25th of June, late Friday, 
that they confirmed that there was some elevated lead in these, lead in these three lines. Monday morning, our general manager has crews out there and we removed all those lines. We didn't know if they were lead or not. The only way you can tell is you have to dig it up and actually inspect it. So we removed those lines on Monday. Well, of course, they're gonna give an administrative order to us, right? In the meantime, what they did, they turned around, they got the EPA in Philadelphia, a federal agency involved in this, right? So we get an, uh, an order, administrative order from the state of West Virginia, telling us these are the steps we have to take. You know, you have to do, 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 all the way around, and remove the lines, whatever. And the story keeps changing. It's been a, a hard time for us. And this is not trying to blame them. We are the first city in the state to go through anything, and a sizable city to do this. So we made a commitment. We're going to try to do this the right way we can because we can be the guinea pig of the test that other people can follow our example. And that's what we want to do. We want to do it right. So we're waiting for, uh, you know, we're doing our stuff and so on. And uh, that was uh, what they sent us was their, um, uh, uh, that was on July 25th, uh, June 25th. Then on July 2nd, again, what's that weekend? Friday, July 2nd, we get a, and an administrative, oh, oh, is that the order? Yeah, the first one was uh, telling us we have the, the administrative order. And in that order, it said, we have to do, 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 do. And these are the things they said, and I'll tell you the two that gets me, not only the water, but finding other sources of water for people and what have you. It said that uh, within three days, we had to notify all of our customers who we knew had lead lines, and the ones who may be suspected with a, a information a notification. Within five days, we had to give everybody an educational piece. Now, mind you, that means we have to put out 7,900 or so letters and things like that in that short time. Now, uh, when we brought this up at a meeting and one of the high officials in the state said, well, it's a 4th of July weekend. You guys could have worked to handle this. And I just bit my tongue because I wanted to say, wait a minute. There's no post office. We can't get things printed. I mean, it's a holiday weekend. Nothing's open, you know? So we did as fast as we can. Six business days later, they sent us a notice that says, you're in violation because you didn't get those things done. We're gonna fine you $5,000 a day. And then that's when they got the EPA involved and they started with a more uh, directive and threatening attitude. And as we went along and we kept saying, man, it's, un it's really hard to deal with this stuff. There are partners, we need to work together, we need help. But we never got any help at first. But once Congressman uh, McKinley, Senators Capito, and um, I can't even think, Manchin got involved, they got up and talked to the EPA and so on, said, wait a minute, these guys need help. You know, and so on. So they started becoming a little more friendly, and so on. And finally here, a couple of weeks ago, they gave us a couple of people to come down from the health department to help do the testing and all the stuff and so on. Meanwhile, we're required to do a robocall to everybody, and uh, we must have had 700 people that called in want their lines tested or got questions. So we're answering calls, 35 to 70 every day, trying to help people out. And he's going to go into that a little more. So we're doing everything we can to alleviate this issue. And, um, and that's kind of where we are, and we're trying to do everything within our power. We have 35 employees, the people who go out and dig the lines and do that, there are eight, seven of them are workers, and we have a manager. We have hundreds of miles of lines at 8,500 meters. Morgantown addressed this. It took them 30 years to do it, and they're really pushing us really hard. And I'll tell you, you know, I take it seriously, the stuff about kids. If one kid gets sick, I, I worry about it. I can't say who caused it, but just in case safety, we're going to take the line out. But they want us to come in and also go on the customer side, dig up their yard, you know, we can't do that, it's a private property. So we're trying to work out, he'll describe that in a little bit how we're trying to address that. Uh, I know that back in uh, 1973, it was in, uh, let me think a minute, it was in uh, September of 73, a young man who went, a kid, went to uh, Morgan grade school. He just had his 11th birthday. And uh, he started having a nose bleeding, a little bruising, and they took him to See all of our friend Billy Merchant down at Dr. Hallmarks, the baby doctors, and they told the family that uh, one first thing they suspected was something in the blood system. They diagnosed it as ITP, which is uh, the predecessor to possibly leukemia. It's nasty, but it's generally not as bad as uh, a leukemia situation. And they suspected because it was an older house, it had lead paint. 
that maybe the child got into lead paint the reason they didn't suspect water cause there were two other three other children sorry that had similar ages very close together nobody was ill and this young man had to take ritalin because he had in the classroom he was always distracted so he had that going on and that was in uh september and then in april that child started some more illnesses went back to dr hall and marks and dr hall says bad news for that family your son's got leukemia three months later he was dead guess who that was that was my son so that's why i take this extremely serious i've been there so i envision these people who they found you know what they're going through the other thing our chief uh head of the health department dr joseph said quote in the paper that none of these children have had to been treated medically anything to reduce that uh, lead is a heavy metal out of their system but you don't read a lot about that kind of stuff but we are now challenged with not just removing lines they tell us not to do it but they can't tell us not to do it they try every time they go they put an obstacle and he'll address what they want us to do chemically you know and so we're trying to do our level best engaging a lot of people and he's going to go into that i'm getting choked up a little bit because we want to do this right we want you all to understand this is not in the water that comes out of our plant we don't shoot lead out to you the city of bridgeport in the paper they publish to their people that's a long ways out to bridgeport right they get our water from five locations they tested all five locations and it was in perfect good shape and they don't have lead lines and they haven't they removed them but here's the problem they're now sending to their people that have older homes the saying in the old days when they put copper or whatever they used solder that had lead in it possibly and that's one of the big problems paint chips is another uh, galvanized lines a lot of people use that and just a lot of different things could go on but again the point i'm trying to make is when we send that water out we call it our clear well which goes to our tanks and out it's good water it's just within old homes and maybe some of these service lines over years you know, you buy a product, and lead was the common thing back then. It's like you buy a car, you get a good one, there out of 100 of them, you may get a, a problem. And so we're doing everything we can to address this issue. And boy, you can't believe what happened today and the orders we got last night. And I want to mention this, and I'm going to shut up. Last night, our attorney, we had to hire high-power attorneys because of potential going into the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. This is costing us a lot of money, everything we do, but we're going to do it. Last night, our attorney sent myself, Paul, our other water board member, and John. Let's kind of like give this man a break. He's been working at 1130 at nights. He, he, me, I tell people, in the last three weeks, I've aged three years. I mean, I can see it. Because I'm not concerned or worried about this, I worry people are going to get panic and not know what the heck's going on. So we want to give him the night off last night, right? Last night after 9 o'clock, he gets an email from the EPA in Philadelphia saying, You've got to get to every person who has a lead line, known or unknown. You've got to provide them with filters or give them bottled water. And he can tell you what the problem went there. It's not easy to pick up 4,000 or 3,000 filters. You see what I'm saying? Before, when we were addressing a problem, we saw elevated lead in the line. He immediately we go, removed it. We gave him filters and all the stuff until we flush it and make sure it's okay. You see what we're doing? Which makes sense. But now they want to go through an unknown situation. Remember, from 1911 on, we didn't have computers or tracking devices back then. So he's got people going through old service orders where we go to work on people's lines to see what it says. And it can say in some of that stuff that we remove the line and, if, and what's going on. And then we can deduct that from our total to trying to figure out, they want to know how many lead service lines we have. Now, it's underground. Only way we really know is for to dig it up or from a record. So we're doing that too. And honestly, if you could, I wish you could see our people, what, what they're doing and how hard they're working. Here we go, gave him a break last night, nine o'clock, he gets his email. I get, I get it, I have an hour of sleep, I was up at five o'clock this morning. I'm not worried about we're doing anything wrong. I just feel that burden from them. They're just unreasonable that today, but last night, they said by Friday, we have to notify and put, start getting all this water out. And since we couldn't get the filters, maybe for a few weeks, they said you've got to start giving people cases of water. Now, at that point, that's where we are today, and I thank you for letting me talk so much, but I had to paint a picture 
an honest picture of where we are. We're not minimizing anything, and we'll let you ask all the questions you need. But Jason here can tell you the logistics and the real details, because he manages it. And Jason, if you could pick up with some of your observations. Well, you've done a, you done a very